my dudes, how are you doing? I hope you have a smashing goddamn day. Welcome back to the channel. Obviously, if you're a Red, if you're a United fan, you're riding high from what happened on Sunday. Some have dubbed it the best FA Cup tie game that has ever happened. Now, I'm here to more or less try and show you guys the the ending of it. You know, how, how Ten Hag managed to outthink, outmaneuver, out-tactical Jurgen Klopp. Now, it was an absolute madness. It was an absolute shit show. Everything was crazy. Everything was all over the place. We had Anthony starting at left back, or playing at left back, I should say. We had Amadiala on the field. Marcus Rashford scored a goal. Garnacho just ran forever. We've ended off the game with Bruno Fernandes playing as a centre back. It was it was madness. But anyways, I'm here to show you guys that formation and that style of play that Ten Hag and Manchester United use. Now, more or less, it was this formation right here, a three-two-three-two. With Ahmed Diallo given the role, given the reins to drift everywhere and anywhere. And my god, was I grateful for that. Especially with that last second tackle that I can't remember who he made it on. It could have been on Darwin Nunez or Harvey Elliott. Um, of course, he did strip Harvey Elliott with the uh, for the ball. And he ended up scoring the absolute goddamn winner. My goat, my young boy right here. Anyways, so we are here to talk about... Sorry, I'm getting a bit too hard. But we are here to talk about how Ten Hag and what those tactics were that managed to end up beating our greatest rival in Liverpool. 4-3, hold that, take your 7-0, 4 plus 3 equals 7. Anyways, I'm not, I'm not trying to banter you guys, even though it's hilarious, but I'm here to discuss these tactics. So if you guys don't mind, hit that like button down below, subscribe if you are new. You can definitely add these to the previous, more updated Manchester United tactics if you would like. I absolutely love the system. It's it's chaos. It's everything you want. You can't see goals, but you score so many. It's perfect. Um, unless you like structure. If you like structure, then it's going to be a 1 out of 10. But if you like chaos, you like scoring goals, you like this absolute madness, 10 out of 10. Anyways, so we're here to discuss this. Let's hop on straight into the goddamn video. So, moving on to the formation. Now, I selected the 3-5-1-1 system, and I obviously altered and changed player positions and put them in the positions that you see right here right now. So therefore, it will be one goalkeeper, three centre-backs, two DMs, one attacking midfielder, two wingers, and then of course, two strikers. Okay, so moving on to the tactics. Now, the tactical vision that I've selected is wing play. Throughout the course of this Manchester United, you know, FT24 career, we have always selected wing play for Eric Ten Hag. I think that is more or less the way that he's looking to play. And we have seen really good glimpses of that. So we're going to stick with that for this tactic. Although, like I said in the beginning, in the intro, it was a madness. It was a chaos. Was there a style of play? Yes, there was because there was relentless pressure all the time. When United lost the ball, Liverpool tried to clear it. It was winning aerial duels, winning headers, winning the, the 50-50s. It was winning goddamn everything. So pressing off possession loss is going to be essential. I would also say you could go with constant pressure as well. But it depends on when you are chasing the game. If it's like the last five minutes, you're chasing the game and you want to use this style of play, feel free, but use constant pressure. It does help a little bit better. But I've gone with pressing off to possession loss if you are looking to start off the game in this formation. As for the team width, it is set to 25. And of course, the depth is set to 90. It was the highest of lines. We had Harry Maguire in the field. It didn't goddamn matter because we were just winning everything. So you want to try and press that line that, that back line nice and hard the field, pushing and forcing the pressure onto the opposition as much as possible. So, moving on to the offense, the ball to play that I've selected is balanced. It allows you to incorporate the long ball approach, the slow build up, as well as the fast, pacey, quick maneuverability in between the lines approach as well. Of course, we did see all three of these different various aspects in the game against Liverpool, especially in the latter stages. We saw a lofted ball over the top from Ericsson, which is what you would be expected to do with him. But that ball over the top into Rashford in the last minute where he did miss. Although, I think he was offside. Most people are saying, oh, he just missed. But I, I'm pretty sure he was offside. But we also saw the ability for Man United to move the ball from side to side. Waiting for the angles. Waiting for the space to open up. Waiting for players to get in between the lines. And into those little half spaces. Waiting to exploit Liverpool. So, I think a balanced ball to play suits the style of play. As well as the chance creation set to position. You are looking to try and maintain and keep the ball as much as possible. Looking to, again, put those players in between the lines. Give them the time and the space to try and work into those specific spaces as well as making sure that you're maintaining the ball and dictating the pace of play on to the width it is set to 75 a, a bit more of a stretch to it of course trying to pull liverpool players out of their more natural positions into those wide areas that was the main aim of the game whether it was anthony on the on the right hand side and garnacho on the left 
they did try and do this very effectively. And like I said, when you are rotating the ball from side to side, waiting for those pockets of space and stuff to open up in the opposition's back line, you do need a bit more width to your game. So I think 75 best reflects and represents a realistic aspect to those tactics. As for the players in the box, I've set it to nine. Of course, you'll see the likes of Harry Maguire bombing on forward, getting into the box. Um, I mean, there was that, that one ball over the top where Harry Maguire was just playing as a striker. It was the most hilarious thing I've ever seen, but it was just chaos. And that's what Eric Ten Hag was trying to do. He was trying to make sure that Liverpool couldn't settle into the game um, because obviously they are a very good, high quality team. And if you allow them time and space on the ball, they can hurt you. But if you don't, if you create chaos, if you create this consistent motion of relentless stress and pressure, they tend to to cripple under the 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 waves of, of of attacking outlets. So you want to try and you know jack that up to nine, have you know four to five players, maybe even sometimes six players in that attacking area looking to try and get on the end of the crosses and the cutbacks and anything that you are trying to work on into the box. Onto the corners and the free kicks, as always, it is set to four. Okay, so moving on to your instructions. Starting off with Onana, he is set to come for crosses and be a sweeper keeper. Of course, with such a high line. You need a very proactive, very good sweeper keeper. And there was that one moment in the game where I think Liverpool were, were counter-attacking and Onana was literally standing in like on the edge of his box, like doing this, waiting for Harvey Elliott to try and do something. And they ended up hitting the post, which would have absolutely crippled me as a human being if that had gone in. But it didn't. And you want to try and replicate this role very successfully. So if any aerial balls are whipped into the box, of course, you are very light at the back. You do want and require your goalkeeper to be very aggressive, claiming those balls as well as... If the balls are fired in over the top, waiting to exploit your very high line, you do want and require the likes of Onana to be a sweeper keeper, step up nice and high, win the ball back, and obviously look to circulate it back into play. Now, into the back line. Now, this is a oh, this is a craziness. So, uh, the, the two wide centre-backs, they're set to overlap and step up, of course. We saw the likes of Lindelof as well as Delo get forward, get wide, try and, you know, create overloads in those wider channels as much as possible. I mean, even Lindelof popped off a shot, and I honestly thought that it had gone in at, at one point. But anyways, so you want them to be able to do that very effectively. But at the same time, with Harry Maguire, you want him to play as a striker. Now, this does leave you very exploited at the back. So I would probably suggest, if you are chasing a game, these would be the best possible instructions to use in that situation. We have seen countless times Maguire get forward, especially late on in games when United are down or chasing a game or trying to win the game themselves. We do see him break into the box, add another element, uh, an ability to win the ball in the air, win the knockdown effects and, and, and crosses and all that stuff, and try to link up very nicely. So you want him to bomb forward, but in terms of the other instructions, normal interceptions, and then of course, stick to position. So every now and then you do tend to see your middle sense back in Harry Maguire bombing forward and linking up play nice and hard field. As for the likes of Ericsson and Bruno Fernandes, so, in terms of Ericsson, he's set to cut pass lanes, drop between the defenders, normal interceptions, and then, of course, be the deep line playmaker. Both him and Bruno will have this role very effectively. You want them to be able to pop up in the little half spaces, collect the ball, and more so, they were the guys pulling the strings at that deeper rate, launching those balls forward, launching those long balls into the front line, and you want them to be able to do this very effectively. In terms of the defensive position, because your, your center backs drift wide and Harry Maguire sometimes gets forward, you want your two DMs in Fernandez and Ericsson to be able to patrol those central areas very effectively. As for the likes of Bruno, he's set to a balanced defense, allowing him to try and keep the shape as much as possible, not really having that zonal approach. Um, in terms of the attacking support, drop between the defenders, and then of course, aggressive interceptions. You want him to still show his effortless work rate, the consistent running all over the place, trying to win the ball back as well. Uh, the positioning freedom should be set to deep line playmaker. Sorry, I forgot to change that, but it should be set to deep line playmaker, allowing him as well, getting on the ball, and looking to try and facilitate and create at a deeper rate. And then, of course, just like with Ericsson, he is set to cover the center. So, on to the likes of Scott McSauce. We have seen him countless times breaking into the box, you know, getting on the end of headers and whatnot, and you want to still have that, you know, same role and instructions for him. He was very good at winning the ball back from Darwin Nunes. Thanks for the pass, Darwin, you absolute king. Um, and then, obviously, linking up very nicely with Rashford just in front of him. So, in order to replicate his role very effectively, he will be told to stay forward. Now, this does create a bit of a hole in your in your midfield so if you don't like that i would say keep it on basic but more so stay forward replicates the way he plays and the style of play player that he actually is 
Of course, you want him to be able to get into the box, but you want him to also stick to position. You don't need him drifting all over the place. You have a whole other lot of, you know, moving pieces in and around him. So stick to position for McTominay is absolutely essential. And then finally, aggressive interceptions. Okay, so moving on to your left and your right winger. They have got the same roles and instructions as well. Come back on defense, looking to try and help out the wider center backs as well. And then, of course, have a balance with allowing them to drift into those wider channels if required, putting the opposition players out of position, but at the same time also allowing themselves to cut inside or maybe make those more central runs into the attacking areas. The support runs is going to be set to get in behind, of course, when you are stretching the opposition's back line, you do need a bit more penetration from your wider areas, and of course with wing play, it allows your wings to be very effective with doing this, and of course you want them to be able to break in behind. The interceptions is set to aggressive and then finally you want both Garnacho and Anthony breaking into the box waiting for either a cross or a cutback or maybe even trying to create for the likes of Diallo, Rashford and McTominay. Onto the likes of Anthony as you'll see here he's got the same role, same instructions and everything. Thank you very much for using your right foot against Liverpool. I think he's found his level. What would you guys say? Okay so moving on to the likes of Ahmed Diallo. Now he was an absolute king on the day, was everywhere and, and doing everything possible in order to try and make sure that United got the win. Um, so kind of trying to replicate a role where he's drifting all over the place. And of course, as a striker, you can't really effectively do this that much. But for the support runs, I've set him to balance, allowing him to drift in and out of the more central areas. The attacking runs is set to false line. It allows him to drop a bit deeper, link up nicely with McTominay and Anthony and Garnacho, and sometimes even slightly deeper as well, allowing him to also get on the ball and try and create further up the field. The interceptions is set to aggressive, of course, imp implementing that effortless work rate that he had when he came on. And then finally, the defensive support is set to come back on defense. Obviously, we did see him track back quite a lot. And like I said, I can't remember if he took the ball off of Harvey Elliott or whether it was Darwin Nunez on that counter-attack where he like just came in and nicked the ball off of, I think it may have been Darwin Nunez. And um, that kind of led to, I think, one of the goals. I can't remember, but nonetheless, it was fantastic from him. And then finally, for the Rashford role, he was set to stay central. Of course, I did see him drifting wide every now and then, but more so with his attacking outlet when he was shifted to that striker role, it was more central. A lot of his attacks were targeted down at the middle. And of course, with Rashford, his pace is his number one key element to his success. So you want to try and use that to your team's advantage with the ability for him to get in behind. And this does allow you to play those long balls in behind as well. The interceptions is set to aggressive, although you can also shift it onto normal if needed. But I've gone with aggressive. It allows for that nice, aggressive, consistent, counter-pressing um, system that we are looking to try and create. And then finally, the defensive support is set to basic, allowing him sometimes to drop a bit deeper and support the team, other times hanging up the field and being a counter-attacking option. And there you have it, people. That is how I would replicate the chaotic Eric Ten Hag 3-2-3-2 system that he used in order to defeat, destroy, dismantle Jurgen Klopp's kids. But he didn't have many kids on the field that day. Anyways, out of 10, you guys can also let me know down below. But out of 10, the heart says 9.5. But in all honesty, out of 10, I would give this a 7. If you are chasing a game late on and you use these tactics, I think they can more times not pop up with a goal for you. So in that aspect, massive 10 out of 10 type tactics. But if you're using it from the get-go, from the beginning, you're going to be exploited on the defensive end more times than not. So maybe don't use that. Use it as a as a game plan, potentially as a loss, as a plan B, maybe as well. Um, but yes, I would give this a solid seven. Uh, like I say, the offense is great, but the defense is very shaky. So yeah. Anyways, you guys can let me know down below what you would rank and rate this system out of 10. Of course, whilst you're there, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, the bell notifications as well. Those three things would be fantastic. Four things, actually, four things if you comment, that would be great too. Um, but yes, until the next time, my dudes, I hope you have a smashing goddamn day, and I'm out.